ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the NIIT limited Q1 FY25 earnings conference call as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vijay Thadani, Managing Director and Vice Chairman of NIIT Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon uh, to everyone who's able to join this call. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, using your time to be with us uh, this afternoon in the busy earning season when you had multiple opportunities and truly appreciate your interest and uh, interest in NIT Limited, and uh, <laughs> also for all the encouragement and guidance we have provided in the past. The purpose of today's call is to discuss the uh, quarter one results and uh, also have a discussion Q&A on that. Uh, I have on this call uh, with me the chairman of the company, Mr. R.S. Pawar, uh, the uh, 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 Mr. P. Rajendran, who is the Joint Managing Director, <coughs> Mr. Sapnesh Lala, who is uh, non-executive director now, having led the company very successfully for the previous year, uh, Mr. Kapil Saurabh, uh, who is the Investor Relations, Sanjeev Bansal, who is the CFO and other members from the finance function. I also have great pleasure in introducing a new person in our Amit Sass, and that is uh, Mr. Pankaj Jathar, who joined us as the Chief Executive Officer on July 1st, 2024. We are indeed very excited to have him join us at this very interesting juncture for the organization and <clears throat> are looking forward uh, to his leadership to take the company forward uh, as we go through the exciting journey of the future. Uh, just a few words on Pankaj. Uh, Pankaj uh, is a forever NITian. Uh, we never call NITians ex NITians. We call them forever NITians. And this is one such example of a forever NITian coming back. And uh, if actually going one step beyond, uh, he is in fact a GNIT graduate. He started as, a, as his association with NIT as a student of NIT, but then went on to do higher degrees and higher qualifications and became <coughs> um, finished his management from IIM Calcutta. Uh, and then he joined NIIT again as a, uh, as a fresher and spent the first two years of his working career with us. After which he's been at multiple locations which have enriched his career with uh, very interesting experiences all of which are very, very useful to NIIT. He brings significant experience and expertise in both enterprise as well as consumer go-to-market strategies. In his previous roles, he has been in various senior roles at Amazon India, including part of the Amazon launch team in 2011. And then he went on to become the CEO of Freon, an Amazon venture. He's also been the country head for HC India, very uh, popular and uh, famous <coughs> uh, e-commerce portal from U United States. They had an India operation. He was the country head for that. He's been a solution architect at Accenture, and he's also been done business development in the training industry when he was at Tata Interactive Systems. So over the years, he has successfully set up and led the growth of HC's e-commerce platform. He created and expanded Amazon India sports category, built a high-performance business team at Cloudtail India, and de developed an efficient sales and service organization at Prior. He holds a Bachelor of Engineering from Pune University, and as I mentioned, an MBA from IIM Calcutta, but what he is most proud of is his GNIT from NIT. <coughs> Uh, at the end of this call, I will ask him to say a few words. 
uh, and at this time, uh, I think his few words will be just demonstrating his understanding of what the opportunity and challenges ahead of uh, ahead of him. But I'm sure he'll come up with a more specific plan as he starts discussing with us uh, in the future calls. So moving to quarter one update. <coughs> Revenue for quarter one was at 825 million rupees, which was up 32% year on year and up 11% quarter on quarter. 32% <coughs> is <coughs> also to be kept in mind, given that quarter one of last year was one of our lowest quarters in recent times. And that was when there was a hiring freeze in, uh, in the IT services industry which had a very, very large share in our overall revenue mix. <clears throat> so that actually caused quite a furore within the system, but I think NIT Limited uh, used all its resilience and agility to come together uh, with a solution and with a bunch of pivots, which have helped us grow significantly. So this 32% is a testimony in many ways of the success of the pivots that we did. Uh, the EBITDA is near a break even at negative 2 million as compared to negative 64 million last year. Uh, that's actually coming out of the fact that while revenue has grown, <coughs> the company still remains in the investment cycle and will actually remain so for the next few quarters as well. <coughs> Net other income for the quarter was at 155 million rupees, which had a lion's share coming from the treasury income of 123 million rupees and 36 million rupees of miscellaneous income of interest on tax refunds, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the PAT was at 78 million rupees, and this was also an increase over the same period last year when PAT was at 22 million in quarter one last year. EPS was at 60 pesa per share versus 20 pesa per share. <coughs> now on uh, revenue, <coughs> this is the second successive quarter of our year on year growth. As you know, the business was impacted last year due to a virtual freeze in hiring by large IT services Swift actions, number of swift actions led to recovery uh, in both technology programs as well in banking and other programs. These pivots included four te technology programs, a focus from tier one GSIs to tier two GSIs, because in this period, tier two GSIs continued to hire as well as continued their investments in, in uh, training their workforce. The second was increasing penetration in GCCs, which both have increased their spend as well as the number of GCCs have gone up. And third, given the hiring freeze, we focused on advanced technology skills for working professionals. This has resulted in actually creating a new line of advanced programs to uh, equip digital architects to manage technology and technology services in the current time. These were some of the pairs for technology. For BFSI and other programs, uh, the, the focus was on increased penetration in large private banks, as well as broad base of our offerings to the India enterprises. Uh, in the India enterprises, the most significant part was the thrust that we put on generative AI. And I think the early actions uh, that we took on understanding, assimilating, and creating use cases of generative AI actually opened doors for us. A large number of senior management of organizations willing to consider <laughs> generative AI as a method to make their organizations more, more efficient, more effective, and create a better competitive or a stronger competitive position. <clears throat> so, Product mix. In product mix, our year-on-year -year revenue uh, growth was contributed by continued volume and enrollment growth from BFSI and others, which went up 
94% year on year, and technology programs, which went up 13% year on year. At that time, last year, uh, one year back, DFSI was very small, and I think the pivot to increase penetration is visible in this statistic. Technology marks a return from uh, the, the lower that we had reached to uh, a substantial growth over the last one year. DFSI uh, and others now represent 34% of our business versus 23% last year. What's also interesting to see is in technology, 25% growth in working professionals. Typically, NIT <coughs> was very well known <coughs> for its contribution in training students with early careers. But our focus on working professionals has also helped us in uh, increasing the technology training for working professionals uh, through advanced technology programs. In BFSI, the work pro programs contributed, well, grew 125% over last year, and 74% growth was also seen in early careers. On margins, what I would like to say is that the company is in investment cycle and is continuing to make both CapEx and OPEX investments to drive growth. These include investments in launching new products, new channels, new marketing programs, adding more people, and in improving the visibility of NIT in the market. We launched new advanced technology programs, including specialized program for digital architects, aimed at senior technology leaders in GSIs and GCCs. We launched the pilot for uh, a hybrid channel for learner acquisition and uh, engagement. We in we invested in initiatives for improving visibility, which, in, which was confluence our annual customer conference conducted during the quarter, as well as a digital architect conclave, which got conducted in the first two weeks of this quarter, but efforts were on for a long time. Uh, in the previous quarter, we also initiated uh, the CEO roundtables on enterprise adoption of generative AI, which were very well attended. We expect all these will contribute to scale our business with these customers across a wider set of scaling requirements. Given the large opportunity ahead of us, we are prioritizing these initiatives as well as continuing to invest in products, channels, as well as a new way of uh, accessing markets. Uh, and we are prioritizing and investing in these over near-term margins. Uh, while operating expenses related to this will hit our PNL in the short term, <laughs> we believe that they will contribute <coughs> to uh, revenue growth <coughs> over medium and long term. On the balance sheet, the balance sheet metrics remain strong. Our DSO was at 54 days as compared to 41 days last year and 46 days last quarter. <coughs> Quarter-on-quarter quarter change was primarily on account of increased billing, as well as uh, the, uh, the impact of certain demergers related. CapEx for the quarter was at 110 million rupees, which included content uh, and investment in a hybrid uh, initiative, uh, software licenses, platforms, etc. Net cash at the end of the quarter was at seven. 185 billion rupees, uh, which is the same as quarter four. So despite investments made and despite very uh, low EBITDA uh, or actually a near uh, break-even performance, I think we were able to add cash or retain cash thanks to the treasury income. Headcount reduced 154 uh, on a year-on-year -year basis and one on a quarter on quarter basis. So at this, this quarter versus last quarter, the headcount seems to have stabilized. Company has been focused on cost rationalization and conversion of costs from fixed to variable over the last one year. And this 
will be a practice that will continue. At the juncture we are at, we have the tier one GSIs coming back, <coughs> with having seen green shoots and small announcements in return of hiring in GSIs. Our pivots of moving to tier two GSIs, TCCs and BFSIs have actually worked out very well for us. Generative AI are, exposed, are exposing our enterprise segment to generative AI have met with very encouraging response. Our new channels of customer acquisition have also given us decent results. Our new products and offerings are now ready. For example, the advanced technology program, more tracks in our uh, consumer go-to-market, our whole uh, digital architect program, as well as a series of modular programs, which should access, help us access a larger share of the market. And we have a much higher visibility in the marketplace, including uh, a program we recently launched with the HDFC Bank, uh, the ACE Bank Banker Program. All these are contributing uh, to our visibility, and therefore, we feel it's the right time for us to press on the accelerator of investments and take advantage of the current environment in which due to lower IT hiring, a large number of graduates are looking for jobs, but they need higher order skills for them to land themselves jobs, uh, a very good opportunity. Second, the mayhem in the ed tech sector, where I think uh, <clears throat> there is an opportunity available for all the market opening exercise that happened, but now they are not there to service them. The investments that we have made in products and channels, our readiness with induction of senior leadership team. Uh, we are excited with Pankaj, Jathar, as well as some other leaders who have joined us are here to go strong on this journey. The union budget of the country also has pointed to opportunities for deep skilling uh, the Indian youth to get them into better jobs and government offering incentives. Therefore, keeping these things in mind, we are increasing investments in market access and considering our guidance that we had given before, while we remain committed to a quarter on quarter growth <coughs> uh, of similar levels that we expect uh, that we got last uh, this quarter, that is about 10% thereabouts. We do believe that our investments will lead to higher operating expenses, and to that extent, therefore, we, our operating expenses may be exceeding our revenues by a two to three percentage uh, base, uh, two, 200 to 300 basis points. And to that extent, I think uh, these investments are the investments that we would like to talk about as well as uh, we believe will be very, very useful for us to build the NIT that we can research of the future. So we look forward to a sequential growth of about 10% in Q2, and given the planned investments, we do have a low single digit negative margin planned uh, or visible at this point of time. Uh, we expect uh, to go past this with acceleration that we expect from green, uh, from IT hiring, which will lead to acceleration. And therefore, in a full year, we do think we would make up for uh, these small losses of the first two quarters and uh, be in a positive territory. And therefore, our full year guidance for the year remains at 380 to 400 crores as we had guided earlier with a low single digit margin for the whole year. I will stop here at this time uh, to and open it up for Q&A. And after that, we can discuss other matters as uh, your questions will dictate. So with this, uh, I ask the operator, request operator, please open up for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment. 
while the question queue assembles. Again, if you have any questions, please press star and one to join the question queue. I think while you are coming up with questions, I'll request Mr. Pawar to talk to us about generative AI and how we are accessing the Indian enterprise space. While they are coming up. Okay. So I think there's, there is, uh, I think it doesn't need to mention that there's a lot of excitement around the subject of GNAI. Uh, the technology in its primitive form or not so ready form taken the world by storm. Everybody knows about Gen AI for sure, though everybody does not know Gen AI, few people do it. So the excitement of Gen AI is getting conversation going, and there's a lot of curiosity about people figuring out what to do with it, because that area is still something that's evolving. In our view, in many ways, Gen AI is a brand new thing which can enable companies to do uh, improvement in how they run themselves and how people work in a manner different from how IT does it. This is an important point to establish because while the IT folks will gradually get onto it and they have concerns about uh, privacy, data privacy, data security, to get them to be mindful about how to deploy it in their ongoing operations. The opportunity for companies to start getting their people to engage with AI to improve how they work is the one that we are looking at as something where NIT has to play a role. Historically, we've done that for IT, and now we're seeing it time to do it for Gen AI. So our conversations so far with leaders have, have given us um, positive feedback. <coughs> that companies, large companies, want to see how they should embrace GNAI. And so our conversations, which we are now progressing and having larger and larger of them, are coming top down with large corporations. And we are, in a sense, proposing a roadmap for companies to embark on a journey with GNAI, which gets them to embrace GNAI top down. So the, the programs that we're currently running are short-term programs to get people started on Gen AI. Needless to say, some companies have moved ahead on this, and we also expect um, we also expect that some of them want to take it more seriously, and therefore the discovery <laughs> of what most important phase in this field is use cases what to do with where to apply Gen AI to get gain is a non-trivial problem. So therefore, the second step of those organizations that are willing to engage themselves is to do workshops around use case discovery, because that then, then leads to companies getting more serious about beginning the deployment of Gen AI, first within controlled arenas, with guardrails so that data is not compromised, that incorrect conclusions are not made, and therefore progress from use case to more use cases to more use cases as they go deeper and deeper into implementation, which may take some time. So I've just given you the general approach and be happy to answer. Do we have any questions now? Yes, sir. On the main brief or what Mr. Pawar talked about? Uh, so, uh, we have our first question from the line of Kaushik Odar from Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Yeah, see, uh, uh, you gave a projection of set 380 to 400 cross turnover on the top line. So, that uh, means a growth of around 30%. Uh, can you explain how can you can achieve the 30% growth? Because that looks to be quite substantial. Well, I think in uh, first quarter, <coughs> we did achieve 32%. Okay. Uh, in the next uh, few quarters that we are talking about, uh, we have uh, an order book and the commitments which are 
reasonable. We are also seeing uh, the banking uh, training requirements also increasing fairly substantially. And uh, we have added new clients, uh, plus our consumer go-to-market, uh, especially on banking, has uh, grown very fast and continues to remain so, as well as uh, we are now beginning to see green shoots in technology. So all these are contributing to uh, the projections that we have made. Of course, the fundamental assumption in this also is that in the second half, the hiring uh, by a technology services company will, <coughs> will increase as we go forward. And uh, as we go in the second half for the last two quarters, can we see even an uh, operating margin of, uh, say, around uh, touching 10% also? With third quarter last year, you had achieved 9%. So can we go to we double digits? No, no, we are in an investment cycle. So okay. let me say the stable parts of the business uh, and stable parts of the activity do generate uh, margins uh, north of 15%, 15 percent. Fifteen. What is the stable part? What is the stable part? I'm sorry. Sta which you consider uh, the stable part? Currently running. I didn't get it. Current business is all working at 15 to 18 percent stable margin. Okay. The okay. part that we are uh, the BFSI part, we are also working on good margins. The investment cycles are in growing them, and therefore part of the uh, profits that we make from them, we, we invest back in marketing and uh, growing the market and take advantage of the current opportunity, as well as the technology part where we are continuing to increase our reach and, uh, and, uh, and coming up with newer products to make sure that we get a wider spread of uh, audiences that uh, come to an IIT program like they used to earlier. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, if you wish to register for questions, please press star and one on your touchstone phone. Our next question is from the line of Ganesh Shetty, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. First of all, let me welcome Mr. Pankaj to NIT group. It must be a great journey for him from being a student of NIT to CEO of NIT. Going ahead, uh, 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 I just have one query, how this union budget they have a greater impact on our strategy going forward and getting into new areas or new sectors like supply chain management and manufacturing, which was there for a quite long time. We have been working on that. Can you please uh, note the progress regarding these sectors? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ganesh. Hello. Impact of union budget. Yeah. Uh, so union budget is essentially uh, the way I read it is provided. I, I I think my colleagues may also want to participate in this. Uh, they are <coughs> they are basically looking at how do we increase employability, and uh, in employability, the <coughs> Making sure that uh, uh, and, and if, if organizations are constrained to employ freshers, then they would like to offer incentives that people are able to get their first-time jobs. Typically, when first-time jobs, <coughs> a person gets a job once, then with experience, the person has a better propensity of getting uh, better jobs as they go forward. And the other issue is that as the government is investing in your initiatives for which the higher education is not preparing the students, uh, take manufacturing, Industry 5.0, uh, 
these are areas where the formal education may be uh, may not be equipping them with the most current skills in which case they would like these skills to come to them through internship program as well as professional skills that they acquire after completing their formal degrees uh, and therefore this whole internship place uh, as well as uh, making sure that the initial part of their salary to an extent gets uh, subsidized by the government uh, in some forms either by uh, uh, contributing in their pf fund or any other way i think are some of the initiatives the government has also come up with a very strong national credit framework and are saying that a person acquires formal credentials by going to a school or a college or going through a professional skills institution but the, the the skills that they acquire on their job also need some credit so they have set up academic rack of credits which was done before but now that if that can be built then your specialized work experience can also become eligible for credit and once you accumulate credit then that credit framework puts you at a certain position which enables you to earn better salary have better growth path so all this is to promote employability startups is another one uh, where <coughs> students have an opportunity to participate in the uh, startup who may not be able to afford them otherwise but government subsidizing them uh, will contribute to that so these are some of the initiatives i anybody around the table would like to add more please do say uh, and uh, our approach as a company will be to study these and see how might our capabilities and our ambition and our aspiration and and uh, expertise uh, be married and put in the same direction in which the government would like to take it we think there will be opportunities for the company but we would wait for the details for us to rectify them and go on a specific uh, growth path or follow a certain strategy yes sir my second question is regarding the uh, acquisition strategy in organic growth like last time we have acquired rks consulting which have which has helped us to build global uh, indian enterprise business to a quite uh, successful extent so now in what respect we are looking for the acquisition where we can you know, uh, increase our uh, revenues and profitability can you please throw some light on this yeah, yeah. so uh, i mentioned it uh, <coughs> there is a mayhem in edtech marketplace and i think we have a lot of uh, value destruction which has taken place there and uh, to that extent that also presents an opportunity to look at good assets that we can acquire and uh, we are very cautious with our shareholders money and would like to make sure that it gets deployed appropriately so we have a, a three pronged approach we either look for a company which will add a new segment which we are not addressing add a new capability which we are not addressing and in this case add a new uh, uh part of the uh, professional life of an individual uh that that say a uh, uh, working professionals or early career and within that in specific segment these are the areas that we are examining which will add value to our capability set and our reach thus reducing our time to market in certain ways if any of these fits uh, and we do not have an uphill climb of turning the company around or putting huge sums of capital then those are the interesting ones that we look for and look for interesting constructs by which we can insulate ourselves from the risks that company might be exposed to otherwise so these are some of the consideration we have an active funnel uh we have been in discussion uh, uh there are a few that uh we went quite far 
and decided that uh, the amount of risk that we were taking because of their past liabilities was far in excess of the value that we will get and we will do from it. Uh, uh, again, I want to hear something from our new CEO and how he plans to take NIT to new phase of growth by assisting our existing management. Thank you very much and all the best. Okay, so maybe this is a good time for Pankaj to make his few statements. Uh, he's at a slight disadvantage today. He has a step throat, but he'll still make a, make a valiant effort. Thanks, thanks, Ajay, and uh, thanks, Anish, for the question. Uh, I'm one month into the system now, so uh, very early days for me to be making any uh, specific comments on uh, strategy and plan. But I would just like to uh, kind of say that uh, I'm very happy to see the kind of uh, culture that NIT has, the kind of commitment that people bring to work, the passion that I see around every day. And uh, in my conversations with uh, some of the customers and uh, employees across the board, uh, what comes across is the strength of the brand. Right? It's very clearly a very strong brand that has been built over the last 40 years and it still endures. And uh, what I also found very uh, interesting was the industry connections that we have, right? We are able to uh, uh, connect with a lot of top leaders across different segments of industry and uh, get a very good understanding of the needs and requirements that industry has, which then has helped us to build solutions and uh, also make quick changes in direction uh, when needed. So all of those are fantastic strengths that I see uh, within the organization. Uh, there are also some things that uh, I would probably do different over the course of the next few quarters. Uh, but from a business point of view, I think uh, Vijay has already given projections that uh, we will stick with. Uh, other than that, I look forward to speaking more uh, to the investors over the next few quarters. And I'm sure we will have more interactions and uh, uh, look forward to that. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. <coughs> Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Pipesh Lakhani from Dalit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I just had a question. Uh, can you provide me more details on specific cost rationalization measures that you have implemented and how will they contribute to improving margins and operational efficiency. Are you referring to how do we intend what have we implemented in terms of cost rationalization and how will it contribute? Yeah, like a rough margin walk. Yeah, so I think in, in cost rationalization, the first issue is of <coughs> variabilization, variabilization of direct people. And in that, I think what we are looking at is to have the key resources fully available with us. And uh, the trainer pool that we access, uh, we are trying to make sure that they are variable and yet available. And that is through uh, an interesting compensation structure as well as the fact that there are larger needs that we have than uh, uh, RPS and ourselves uh, put together. The second is uh, <coughs> there are there is capacity in each part of our business. If we rationalize the capacity together or consolidate together, we can release some of that capacity in terms of, uh, for example, uh, being able to conduct training programs of a certain kind which everybody uses. Third is in our own content development as well as delivery uh, management methodologies, usage of AI and generative AI to create interesting models which make the training much more personalized for uh, our students and yet uh, allows us to deliver it at a lower cost. These are some of the examples I gave. Automation, of course, is a consistent uh, issue because automation not only contributes to productivity, but it also contributes to agility in the organization. 
and at this point of time it is also a very important requirement from de-risking the enterprise from a number of uh, regulatory changes which are taking place. So I think these are some of the examples that I gave. Uh, we can discuss more if you have any specific questions. Understood, understood. Also, just wanted to clarify on uh, the guidance uh, which you provided 30% top line. Is, uh, is it organic or uh, do you have any plans for uh, acquisition in this year? Uh, at this point, well, we have, we have plans for inorganic, but I can't make them up in uh, my projections because an inorganic <coughs> activity till it is signed, it is not there. And therefore, that will add to, uh, if, if at all there are uh, outcomes of that activity we are, at which we have been uh, at for our last many quarters looking for the suitable target. And then when that happens, that will add to this. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Uma from Florin Tree Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah. Um, so in your previous comment, uh, you mentioned that uh, there are certain product categories where you have stable margins of 15 to 20 percent. Could you just elaborate on that and and those uh, product categories where you intend to improvise your margins? Yeah. Okay. So product categories where people have stable margins. For example, RPS has large number of we offer programs along with uh, OEMs or for OEMs themselves as they service their customers. These would be stable margin products because these are, uh, these are uh, offerings which have uh, uh, decent margins and they are stable. The second is our own products which are older. For example, the full stack developer program, whether it is for a, a cloud uh, DevOps or uh, or uh, just software and product engineering. These kind of programs would have stable margins. Uh, our programs that we offer, for example, in cybersecurity, or uh, programs that we offer to enterprises which have a fixed run rate programs, which means the enterprise has committed a certain uh, uh, volume to us, then uh, those are also margin bearing. Uh, where we invest, is uh, a lot in when we are offering uh, consumer go-to-market programs where there is larger marketing effort involved before we start generating revenues. In opening different channels of market access, these require investments. For example, conferences of the kind that I referred to, these require investments in the beginning and the returns follow later and these are expensive uh, <coughs> market access mechanisms. So typically the places where margins remain constrained are when product is new, it is not yet known. Uh, generative AI is one of them. Uh, we put a large number of investments in market access and market education. And uh, now we think we'll start getting the results of this, uh, but it will be a while before we can recover the investments that uh, we have made. Uh, and that will depend on the volume that we get in return. So I, I gave you a bunch of uh, uh, different examples. Hello? Uh, yes. Hello? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Okay. Yes. Uh, just a follow-up question on that. Uh, so, what kind of margins do you believe that uh, generator AI and all uh, all of these products where we are investing uh, should give in longer term? It should give us the upper end of uh, 
margins that we get from premium programs? So that's around 15 to 20 odd percent? Yeah, that could be more depending on the level of engagement. The engagement level margins vary. But uh, overall, for a particular I mean, I'm calling it category, but uh, if, uh, for a particular category of programs, uh, this would be a premium program. Premium programs typically, this program, advanced, uh, the advanced design architect programs, these are premium programs. These typically get better margins. <laughs> okay, understood. Uh, that was pretty useful. Thank you. Thank you. Participants? In order to register for any questions, please press star and one on your touchtone phone. The next question is from the line of Ganesh Shetty. Please go ahead. Thank you for the follow up. Uh, sir, I just want to have one question. Regarding recently, we have had engagement with top tier two wheeler company for training their management training. So that uh, article has appeared in LinkedIn. So is there any such type of uh, uh, opportunities we are exploring overall, sir? I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand which opportunity yeah. you're referring Like uh, we, had, uh, we had an engagement with the TBS Motor for uh, training their management training. Uh, uh, the article appeared in LinkedIn. So is there any the type of same opportunities we are exploring for other manufacturers? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so sales and service excellence <coughs> uh, typically is uh, uh, a type of training which is uh, a fairly unique the way NIT does it. Uh, that's a common offering which we offer to manufacturing companies and those with large distribution networks. Uh, so you can think of the big auto companies that exist in the country, uh, the big, the biggest, and uh, uh, you can imagine that they would be using NIT for uh, increasing, uh, uh, making sure that their their people are much more uh, efficient, as well as they onboard large number of people every year, and we train uh, many of them. Okay, sir. That's all from me. All that. Thank you. For any further questions, please press star and one on your touchstone phone. Okay, operator, if there are no more questions, then we can uh, uh, wrap up this call. Yes, uh, as there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I do know, once again, I'm repeating, it's a busy earning season, and for you to have spent the time with us, we're truly grateful. Your questions, as usual, are very insightful and uh, do open pos new possibilities in our mind, and uh, we get ideas from them, so it's very educative for us to have you on this call. Uh, if there are any unanswered questions, or if you have any further questions that may come up, uh, Kapil Saurabh, uh, and Saurabh Taneja are our two points of contact now in the organization and you can contact any one of them and they would be happy to connect you to the most appropriate person in the organization to answer their call if they themselves can't handle the details of, the, uh, of your query. So with that, I thank you very much once again and wish you the very best. Look forward to speaking with you or meeting you in person at the next available opportunity. Thank you. On behalf of I can close this call. Sure. On behalf of NIIT Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line.